Welcome to The Daily Decameron, Tales to Connect Us in Troubled Times. Episode 10, Patient Griselda. As the final episode in our series, we've chosen the very last of the Decameron's 100 tales. The story of Griselda existed in folklore long before Boccaccio, but it might be said that his version canonized the tale and its heroine and it inspired retellings by Petrarch, Chaucer, and many others. But while it's one of Boccaccio's most famous contributions to literature, it's not an easy tale to love. It recounts the terrible tests to which a sadistic husband subjects his virtuous wife. Tests so cruel that they seem almost biblical, recalling the binding of Isaac and the trials of Job. And it's helpful to read the story in that vein, not as a literal tale of two impossibly extreme characters, but as a parable, written during a time of plague, about enduring unimaginable hardship through sheer force of will. Boccaccio makes it quite clear that he doesn't approve of the husband's brutality. He simply uses him as a device to highlight Griselda's stoic virtue by contrast. It's also clear that he's not making a case that women should be submissive and obedient. What he is ultimately celebrating in Patient Griselda is not her patience or her compliance. It's her superhuman strength. Decima giornata, novella decima, Griselda. The tenth day, the tenth novella, the tale of Griselda. I tell you now the tale of a nobleman, a marquis. But this is a tale not about his acts of nobility, but rather of his senseless cruelty and brutality, an example I would advise no one to follow, for I think it a great shame that he should have derived any benefits from it. Long ago, there lived a young marquis of Saluzzo, whose name was Gualtieri. Having no wife or children, he spent all his time hunting and falconing. His vassals, concerned that he would end up without an heir, and they without a lord, urged him to take a wife, and offered to find him a suitable young woman to marry. My friends, Gualtieri protested, what you are asking for is something I never had any intention of doing, for you well know how hard it is to find a woman of suitable character, and you know also how wretched is the life of a man who marries the wrong woman. But since you are so eager to bind me in the chains of matrimony, I will consent, but I will choose the girl myself, so that I will have only myself to blame if things don't turn out well. Now, for some time, Gualtieri had admired a poor young shepherd girl from a nearby village, and he decided to take her as his wife. When he told this news to his vassals and friends, they pledged that they would honor this girl as their lady, and they set about making preparations for a grand wedding celebration. Gualtieri invited all his friends and relations and many lords and ladies from the surrounding countryside, and he had beautiful dresses, jewelry, and a crown made for his bride-to-be. On the day of the wedding, Gualtieri mounted his horse and had all his guests do the same. My lords, he announced, the hour has come to fetch my new bride, and he led them down the road to the village. When they arrived at the house of the girl, whose name was Griselda, They found her returning from the well, hurrying to be in time to go with the other villagers to see the arrival of Gualtieri's new bride. Where is your father, Griselda? Gualtieri asked her. Surprised that he knew her name, she answered shyly, He is in the house, my lord. So Gualtieri went into the humble house with her and said to the girl's father, a poor old shepherd whose name was Giannucole, I have come to take Griselda as my wife. But first, there are some things I must ask her in your presence. Griselda, will you promise to endeavor always to please me, and never to be angry at anything I say or do, but rather to always be obedient? When Griselda replied that she would, Gualtieri took her by the hand, led her outside, and in front of everyone had her stripped naked and clothed in one of the new dresses he had made for her. And he placed a crown on her disheveled hair. My lords, he said, this is the woman I have chosen for my wife. Will you take me as your husband, Griselda? 
To which the perplexed and blushing girl replied, I will, my lord. And so Gualtieri set her on a horse and led her to his house, where the wedding was celebrated with no less pomp than if he had married the daughter of the King of France. If Griselda had been beautiful before, she seemed now to become even more lovely and more noble. In time, she proved herself to be obedient to her husband and gracious and kind to her subjects, who came to love and admire her. And if they had questioned Gualtieri's choice, they now thought him the wisest man in the world, for who but he could have recognized the nobility of a lady hidden under her peasant clothing? And soon her virtue and her goodness became known far and wide. Before long, Griselda gave birth to a daughter, and it was then that Gualtieri decided he wished to test her patience with a series of terrible trials. He began with harsh words, feigning anger, and telling Griselda his subjects disapproved of her low birth, especially now that she had borne a child. When she heard this, Griselda calmly replied, My lord, do with me what you think best for your honor and happiness, and I shall be content, for I know I am of low birth and not worthy of the honors you have bestowed upon me. It pleased Gualtieri to see that his wife's newfound nobility had not made her haughty, but this test was just the beginning. He told Griselda that his subjects disapproved of the daughter she had given birth to, and a short while later he sent one of his servants to deliver a terrible message. My lady, said the servant, since I do not wish to die, I must do as my lord has commanded. He has ordered me to take this daughter of yours, and and he could say no more. Hearing these words and seeing his face, Griselda knew what she must do. Taking the girl from her cradle, she kissed her, blessed her, and placed her in the servant's arms. But though her heart was filled with grief, she showed no emotion and said only, There, take her now, and do as your lord and mine has ordered you to do. But I beseech you, do not leave her body to be devoured by the beasts and the birds, unless that is what he has ordered. The servant took the child and told Gualtieri what Griselda had said, and he was astonished at her fortitude. He had the servant take his daughter to one of his relatives in Bologna, asking her to raise the girl, but never to tell her whose daughter she was. Soon afterward, Griselda became pregnant again, and in time she gave birth to a son, which delighted Gualtieri. But the trial to which he had subjected his wife was not enough to satisfy him, and so he called her to him, and, pretending to be angry, he said, Lady, my subjects are complaining bitterly that a grandson of Giannucole will be their lord after I am gone. I am afraid that if I do not wish to be driven out, I must do what I did before, and then... I must leave you and take another wife. Griselda listened in silence and then said, My lord, think not of me, but only of what makes you happy. A few days later, Gualtieri sent for his son in the same way, and, again pretending to have him killed, he sent him to be raised in Bologna with his sister. Griselda responded with the same stoic expression as before, and Gualtieri marveled at this and thought that no other woman could ever have done what she had. But still, he was not satisfied. A few years later, he felt it was time to put Griselda's patience to the ultimate test. He told his vassals that he had finally come to realize that taking a shepherd girl as a wife had been an impetuous mistake. He said that he could no longer bear being married to Griselda, and that he would ask for a dispensation from the Pope so that he could leave her and marry someone else. When Griselda heard of this, she grieved most bitterly, but, as with the other injuries she had suffered, she was determined to bear this one with the same resolve. Meanwhile, Gualtieri had forged documents sent to him from Rome that showed that he had received a papal dispensation to remarry. He summoned Griselda, and before all his court he said, Lady, because my ancestors were great noblemen and yours were peasants, I have decided that I no longer wish to be married to you. And so, with the consent of the Pope, I shall leave you and take another wife, 
whom I have already found. Managing with great effort to hold back her tears, Griselda replied, My lord, I have always known that my lowly birth was not suitable to your nobility, and the position you have given me I have always thought of not as a gift, but as a loan. If you wish to take it back, it must be and will be my pleasure to return it to you. Here is your ring with which you married me. Take it, and know that I have not forgotten that you received me naked, and if you wish me to return to my father's home naked, I shall do so. But I ask that you let me take with me one of my undergarments. Gualtieri, more moved than anyone else, held back his tears, and with a stern face said only, You may take one. And so, barefoot and dressed only in a nightshirt, Griselda commended Gualtieri to God, left his house, and returned to her father's cottage, to the great sadness of everyone who witnessed her departure. Giannucole, who had always expected that Gualtieri would not keep his daughter as a wife, had saved the peasant dress she had been wearing the day Gualtieri married her. Griselda put the dress on and returned to the menial chores she had done before she became a noble lady. Gualtieri, meanwhile, told his subjects that he had chosen for his bride a daughter of the Counts of Panago, and he began preparations for an extravagant wedding. Then he sent for Griselda and said to her, I am bringing the lady I have chosen as a wife, and I wish to give her a suitable welcome. You know my household better than anyone, and so I must ask you to clean the house, prepare the rooms, and make all the necessary arrangements for a great wedding. These words were like a dagger in Griselda's heart, but she said only, My lord, I shall do so. And so, in a rough peasant dress, Griselda swept the bedrooms, had the halls decorated, and made arrangements for the feasting. And on the day of the wedding, she welcomed all the guests to her former home with the grace of a noble lady. Gualtieri had had his children raised by a relative who had married into the family of the Counts of Panago. His son was now six years old, and his daughter was now twelve, and was beautiful beyond compare. He instructed this relative to bring his children, accompanied by a fine retinue, to Saluzzo, and to tell no one of their identity, but instead to pretend he was bringing Gualtieri his bride. When the retinue arrived, they were greeted by all the peasants who were eager to see Gualtieri's new bride. The girl was received by the ladies of the court and brought to the banquet hall, and there Griselda, dressed in her humble clothes, greeted her with a smile, saying only, Welcome, my lady. Then Gualtieri said, What do you think of my new bride, Griselda? My lord, she replied, She is most beautiful, and I do not doubt that she will make you the happiest man in the world. But, she added, if I may, I beg you not to subject her to those injuries that you inflicted on that other woman who was once your wife, for she is younger and was raised in comfort, unlike that other woman who was born into hardship. And hearing this, Gualtieri was at last satisfied. Come, Griselda, and sit here beside me, he said, for it is time for you to reap the fruit of your patience. When I married you, I feared that the tranquil life I cherished would be lost, and so I tested you. But since you endured all of my tests so patiently, I now intend to return to you all that I took from you, and more. And so, receive with a happy heart this girl, whom you suppose to be my bride, and her younger brother. For they are your own children, and I am your husband, who loves you more than anything in the world. And saying this, he kissed and embraced her, and she wept tears of joy. Then they went to their children, who had heard this news in great amazement, and took them in their arms. The ladies, most delighted, led Griselda to her old room, dressed her in her finest attire, and ushered her back into the hall as the lady of the house. And there, the family and all the court feasted and celebrated for several days. And from that day forth, Gualtieri honored Griselda to the best of his ability for the rest of their lives. And what more is there to say except this? 
Sometimes divine spirits come down from heaven into poor homes, just as sometimes those more suited to tending pigs than to governing men end up in royal palaces. And though many believed Gualtieri, in spite of his cruelty, to be a wise man, everyone agreed that the wisest of them all was Griselda. Boccaccio wrote the Decameron at the height of the bubonic plague. But one of the things that makes it so remarkable is that the tales themselves never once refer to that plague. Instead, Boccaccio gives us a loving look at the ways of men and women, with all their flaws and virtues laid bare. A vivid celebration of life, when sickness and fear were all around. The Decameron was meant as medicine, and it still is. In the face of despair, stories give us strength, poetry gives us hope, and art endures, just as Boccaccio hoped it would in the epilogue he wrote nearly 700 years ago. The time has come for me to put an end to these words and to humbly give thanks to him who assisted me after so much labor in arriving where I had set out to go. May his peace and grace be with you always. And if perhaps these tales have given you some pleasure, remember me. Thanks for listening to The Daily Decameron, a production of the Italian Cultural Institute of San Francisco. Anna Maria Di Giorgio, director. This program was produced by Franca Cavallaro and edited by Enrica Cavalli, with music performed by John Sales. I'm your host and translator, Steve Siegelman. We hope you've enjoyed these tales and that you'll return to listen to them again. Meanwhile, stay well, stay connected, and share your favorite stories with the people you love.